Toy Story 3 brings more laughs, more heart, and more toys to the series. More secrets and Easter eggs naturally come with the territory, so let's get cracking and see what surprises are in store. The movie starts off in Andy's pretend play world. Like Toy Story 2's video game opening sequence, we're thrust right into the illusion. Only this time, the setting is the Wild West, which is actually more like the beginning of the first Toy Story. Notice how the more realistic clouds still keep the same shape as the wallpaper from Andy's room. Mr. Potato Head, aka One-Eyed Bart, voiced by Don Rickles, even coins the same phrase as he did when Andy voiced him in Toy Story. Ha ha ha! Money, money, money! And that's not all. Slink shows up again as Bart's attack dog, with built-in force field, and even Rex reprises his role as Woody's dinosaur who eats force field dogs. By the way, did you happen to notice the number on the train in Andy's pretend world? 95. 1995 was the year the original Toy Story debuted, and changed animated storytelling forever. All this fun imaginary play takes place when Andy is just a boy at the beginning of the movie, but as we see through a video camera footage montage, time has flown by and Andy is ready for college. In all those years, Andy's room has undergone quite a few changes, which bring a bunch of extra hidden Easter eggs to spot. Take a look at the poster above the headboard of Andy's bed. Recognize the car? It's Finn McMissile from Cars 2. At the time of Toy Story 3, Cars 2 had yet to come out, making this one of Pixar's plug Easter eggs. Next, take a close look over at the calendar by Andy's desk for another Cars Easter egg. Does the make of the car look familiar? It's Snot Rod from the original Cars. Not too far from the calendar is a big blue poster with a mosquito on it. Anything Pixar and insect-related just begs to be compared to a bug's life. Maybe this is a callback to the mosquito at Bennett's, who likes his Bloody Mary's O-positive. What else is there to find? Andy's collected a lot of stickers over the years, and if you look closely at the right wagon wheel on his toy chest, you'll see that a familiar clownfish, Nemo, is on a sticker that's been slapped between two spokes. Let's take a look at Andy's bulletin board while we're at it. Next to his graduation picture is an envelope from the registrar's office at the State University in Emeryville, California. Pixar fans know that Emeryville is where Pixar is headquartered. There's another Pixar address Easter egg to be found just above the door frame to Andy's closet. See the street sign that reads W Cutting? The original address for Pixar Studios in Richmond, California was on West Cutting Boulevard. Another fun little Easter egg can be found just below on the poster covering Andy's closet door. You've got fighter planes and a massive guitar. For a teenage boy, what's not to like? But look at the banner at the bottom. It reads None Shall Pass, the famous word spoken by the infamous Black Knight and the comedy classic send-up of the Arthurian legend Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Hmm, it makes you wonder what Andy doesn't want anyone to see in there. At this point in Andy's life, playing with toys isn't the priority it once was, and the toys, the ones he has left that is, are desperate for any kind of interaction with him. They devise a crank phone call operation in order to get his attention. Take a look at Buzz's arm where Andy's cell phone number is written. There used to be a communicator on that arm. Well, if you remember, Buzz got rid of the decal way back in the first Toy Story during his identity crisis over at Sid's. Thought you heard the last of Sid, didn't you? Well, he's back, and he's sworn to wreak havoc and seek revenge. Not just on the toys, but on Andy's whole family as well. Just kidding. I mean, not entirely. We do see Sid, but it's all good. He's grown up now, too, and he's got himself a job with the city sanitation department. See? You know it's Sid because he's wearing his favorite t-shirt. Just look at him, jamming to some tunes, getting a little exercise, cleaning up the city, happy as a clam. Not all Toy Story characters have made their sweet return, sadly. Remember when mentioning Andy's toys I said, the ones he has left? Over the years, some key players have gone away, including the herder of Woody's heart, Bo Peep, voiced by Annie Potts. The toys make reference to her, in fact, during the meeting. So, what happened to Bo? Well, did you know that Bo Peep was never really Andy's to begin with? She and her sheep were Molly's porcelain figures, and part of a lamp. She hung around in Andy's room in the first movie because that's where Molly's crib was when she was a baby. And when we first see her in Toy Story 2, she comes in to report that Woody's hat wasn't in Molly's room. And so, at some point over the years, Molly sadly outgrew her, which is why she doesn't appear in Toy Story 3. Or does she? Do you remember that video camera footage at the beginning of the movie? At one point, Andy has built a little fort and it's surrounded by toys while watching a movie and eating popcorn. There she is, standing in the corner, along with a couple other characters who didn't make the final cut, Wheezy the Penguin and Snake. 
Perk up your ears for this little sequence because there's something else the filmmaker snuck in under Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me. Pay close attention to the kernel of popcorn Andy puts in Rex's mouth. Before it falls out completely, it shifts a little, and when it does, you can hear a very familiar sound. <coughs> the Wilhelm scream from 1951's Distant Drums is a part of the movie Andy is watching. The Wilhelm scream is a reoccurring Easter egg with Pixar, though not quite as reliable as John Ratzenberger cameos or the appearance of A113. As far as Ratzenberger is concerned, we know he's in the Toy Story universe. He's the voice of Ham. As for A113, you better believe it's here too. This time, it's kind of a gimme. Do you remember where to find it in the original Toy Story? That's right, the license plate of Andy's mom's car. For this movie, well, the model's been updated and so have the plates, but the number remains the same, A113, the CalArts classroom, where the original animators and collaborators who built Pixar cut their teeth. A113 isn't the only number with significance when you take into account that Toy Story 3 was directed by Lee Unkrich. Lee fancies himself a sort of super fan of the horror classic The Shining. Anyone who's seen Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of the Stephen King novel knows that very bad things happen in room 237 of the Overlook Hotel. What can I say, the guy's got a morbid sense of humor. He's hidden the number 237 in multiple places throughout this movie. First, there's the trash truck. Like I said before, always look at license plates. And this one is no different. It even starts with the abbreviation for the word room, RM237. Next up, when Woody's trying to see how far he is from Andy's house on the computer, he's interrupted by a chat message from one of Trixie's friends. Trixie is a Triceratops toy played by Kristen Shaw. So, what's her online friend's screen name? Velocistar? Yep, you guessed it, 237. This third one is super tricky, and you might need a lightning quick pause thumb to catch it. Be at the ready when Chatter Telephone is running down the security of Sunnyside Daycare for Woody. At one point, you see a stuffed bunny make a break for it before a quick zoom leads to one of the surveillance cameras operated by the wind-up monkey. Before the camera turns, which happens very quickly, you can make out that the last three digits of the model number are 237. Ah, yes, Sunnyside, the daycare where nothing is quite as it seems. Lotso Huggin' Bear, voiced by Ned Beatty, convinces Andy's leftover gang of toys to stay, at which point they become his prisoners. We learn Lotso, like so many toys before him, became this terrible manipulative version of himself because he couldn't, yeah, I'm gonna say it, he couldn't bear the fact that after being lost by his kid Daisy, he was replaced by another. During the flashback sequence, he, Chuckles, and Big Baby hitch a ride on another recurring Pixar Easter egg, probably more at home here than most other Pixar films. I'm talking about the Pizza Planet delivery truck. There's another interesting detail regarding Lotso's past, from a production standpoint. Did you know that he used to be in Andy's room? Well, an earlier version of him anyway. You see, back in the original Toy Story, director John Lasseter originally intended to include Lotso as a featured character. Problem was, the technology wasn't quite ready for him, and the animators couldn't quite get his fur right. So all we got of him was an early glimpse during the meeting when Woody asks if the toys up on the shelf can hear him. As for the other toys at Sunnyside, there are plenty that might be recognizable to fans of a certain age. There's also a little wooden version of Lightning McQueen. You can see it hanging out next to Woody as the gang is welcomed to Sunnyside. But maybe the most iconic toy of the bunch is Ken, voiced by Michael Keaton. And when Molly's Barbie doll, voiced by Jody Benson, catches his eye for the first time, it's as if the rest of the world melts away. Did you know that Ken and Barbie are based on actual designs from the real-life toy line? Ken is a 1988 animal-loving Ken, and Barbie is based on the 1983 Great Shape Barbie toy. Here's another fun detail involving that toy line. Watch as Ken takes the Dreamhouse elevator down to greet Andy's toys. The filmmakers added a few little hitches as the elevator comes down because that was a memorable flaw in the toy. Michael Keaton sure made the character of Ken his own. When Buzz is caught snooping on Lotso's cronies in the vending machine, he's brought before Ken who says menacingly, take him to the library. Only he doesn't say library. During one take, Keaton played with the fact that Ken has a less than stellar IQ and he decided to pronounce it library instead. Lee Unkrich got such a kick out of it, he kept it in the film. Michael Keaton must have had some fans in the animation department too. During the scene when he begins to show Barbie his wardrobe, at one point he shows her his letterman's jacket with a pendant that says state. Though it's not spelled out for us, Michael Keaton is an alumnus of Kent State University. The school colors, blue and gold. How's that for a sweet little detail? 
Speaking of sweet and little meet Bonnie, voiced by Emily Hahn. Her mom works at the Sunnyside Daycare, and when Woody drops in on her, it sets in motion a brand new destiny for Woody and the gang. At one point, Bonnie brings Woody home with her. That's where he meets Trixie, Mr. Pricklepants, voiced by veteran British actor Timothy Dalton, and Jeff Garland as Buttercup, the stuffed unicorn. While Bonnie's taking a potty break, Buttercup tells Woody, we do a lot of improv here, which is funny because Garland himself is a comedian and particularly well known for working on the hit show Curb Your Enthusiasm, where much of the dialogue is improvised by the performers. Not for nothing, but you might also recognize his voice because he was the captain of the Axiom in 2008's WALL-E. Bonnie has a very strong imagination when playing with her toys, just like Andy, and she sure has her fair share. Fans of Studio Ghibli will point out that she even has a plush My Neighbor Totoro in her room. Bonnie also happens to have a very special Easter egg on her backpack. Look closely and you'll see a Wally B patch from one of Pixar's first shorts. The Adventures of Andre and Wally B. I think it's safe to say that Andy is putting his old toys in good hands, but not before one last play and a grateful farewell. Shut up, I'm not crying. <laughs> You're crying. Remember the clouds from Andy's room in Toy Story and his imaginary world at the top of this movie? Here they are again. Finally, we come full circle. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some cool new details you might have missed from Toy Story 3. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie trivia, secrets, and Easter eggs. So long, partner.